Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Before we go any further with morning inspiration, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. I thank you for life, health, and strength. I thank you for this platform that you provided. Please forgive me of all my sins and give me what to say to these, your precious people. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. So today, we're going to continue. Good morning, Sister Hemphill. We're going to continue with assurance of salvation. God loves us. Before we go any further with assurance of salvation, because we like to take our time during morning inspiration and really feast on the Word of God. We don't want to eat like fast food. We want to take our time and enjoy God's Word. So, assurance of salvation. Looking at assurance of salvation, we know that assurance by definition, is confidence and certainty. It's a promise. Salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences brought about by faith in Jesus. Okay? So, we want to look at a couple verses, and this is not complicated. I'm just here to stir up your pure mind. Okay? If you are saved, this will encourage you. This will you know, be a way that you can share the gospel with a little more ease, okay? So when you think about salvation, when we look at it, okay, if we can break salvation down there, we can do the ABCs of salvation, ABCs of becoming a Christian. Um, first of all, before we become a Christian, we know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. I always bring that in, and I love to bring that verse in. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God loved the fallen world. God loved his creation. Even though his creation fell, he loved it so much that he was driven to action. He loved it so much that he gave not anything, but he gave his best, his only begotten Son. He gave his Son as a sacrifice for us, to redeem us back to him to restore a re right relationship, a right standing with him. He gave his son for us, okay? That's John 3.16, for God so loved the world. So, we know sin is choosing your way instead of God's way. That's what sin is. Sin is choosing your way instead of God's way. Sin separates people from God, okay? We know God sent Jesus so you would not have to die for your sins. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and he rose from the dead for us. Okay? We have to admit to God that we are a sinner before we become saved, before we can access salvation. That's one of the things we have to do. We have to admit it. The first people God created, we're just doing a little, a little review. The first people God created chose to sin and disobey. That was our great, 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 however many greats you go, grandparents, that would be Adam and Eve. It wasn't just Eve. It wasn't just Adam. It was a partnership that led us into a fallen and a sinful world. Okay, the, the first people God created chose to sin and disobey him. Ever since then, all people have chosen to sin and disobey. If you look at it, let's just be natural for a moment. You look at children. We don't have to teach our children how to disobey us. We don't have to teach them how to do the wrong thing. It's quite natural. If you tell the child, hey, you need to clean up your room before you go to bed or you need to clean up your room when you get up, they will do the opposite. We don't have to teach them that. You ask them, did they do something? And you, you know, you even saw them doing it. They would say, I didn't do it. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how that lamp got broken. They do that naturally. We are in a natural, from a natural perspective, we are in a fallen, a sin sick, a sin infested world. And when we are born into this world, we are born naturally with those characteristics. Okay? So it says you have to repent and you have to turn away from your sin. That's what repentance is. So we know when we repent, one of the things we do when we repent we have to admit our sin. When we admit our sin, we look at 1 John 
1 and 9. 1 John 1 and 9 tells us, if we confess our sin, he, that's Jesus, is faithful and just. He's not just faithful, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? First of all, we have to admit. Okay? We have to admit. We have to, we have to, we have to admit that we are a sinner. We have to acknowledge that. Okay? We have to acknowledge that. That's step one. Step two is believe. Believe that Jesus is God's son and accept God's gift of forgiveness from sin. So we've already admitted. It's only the ABCs. It's three things. We've already admitted to God that we're sinners. We've done that. We've admitted that. We now believe. We believe that Jesus is God's son and accept God's gift of forgiveness from our sin. Okay, so we know in John 14 and 6, we just talked about that a couple days ago. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, that's what it comes down to. Okay, so let's review. Because it's okay for us to review. We have to admit to God that we're a sinner. We have to believe that Jesus is God's son and accept God's gift of forgiveness from sin. Now we have to confess. Okay? We confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Okay? We confess in Romans, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse. And I always read this or I always quote this. When we talk about, you know, how, how to get saved. So, Romans, let's read the whole thing and we'll, and, and I'll say when we're on 9. So, Romans the 10th chapter, 8 through 10. I'm not going to paraphrase it this time, but I'll break it down as we read it. Because it says a lot of thus and thou. We know we don't talk that way anymore. This was during King James time, the thus and the thous. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Faith. Right here, I got the faith shirt on today to try to draw more emphasis on faith. This is a faith walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? So it says, but what saith it? It's asking a question. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And it's talking about, and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. We constantly drive home the point of faith. Faith, faith, faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says it right there. Faith, 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 faith. Okay? Now here is nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So let's, do, let's look at the thou's and the thus real quick. That if thou, that's you, shalt confess with your mouth instead of thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart, which is your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. Okay? It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's it right there. Those are the ABCs of salvation. So, Maybe the person who shared this video with you, they're already, the person who shared the video with you is probably already saved. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Christ right now. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Christ Jesus. There's no time like the present. There's no time like six something in the morning. It's a good time. It's a quiet time. Okay, you don't have to be at church if you're not at church. But if, you, if you're in church, that's a great place to accept Christ too. You could be out on your patio. You could be in your kitchen, at the kitchen table. It doesn't matter where you are. You can accept Christ, okay? While you're on this side of life, you can accept Christ. While you're on this side of eternity, you can accept Christ. I just want to disturb your pure minds today. I just wanted to encourage those who are saved, hey, this is a way we can share the gospel. The gospel is not complicated. Salvation is not complicated. We complicate it. Let's uncomplicate it where we can reach more people. People are not looking for complicated things right now. People want answers. 
People want a savior. People want salvation. We as Christians have to present it to them. Okay? That's what it comes down to. We have to present it. And guess what? When you present something, you are making it available. You're telling somebody about it. That's what we have to do. Our job, our responsibility is to tell somebody. Okay? Tell somebody about Christ. That's what it comes down to. And if you want, let's let's make it even simpler. At the end, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a general prayer, and then I'm gonna say a prayer for salvation. Let us bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for this time. I thank you for your precious word, Father God. I ask that you heal those that are suffering with the coronavirus during this time of pandemic, Father God. I ask that you comfort those who have lost loved ones. I ask that you release your peace, Father that passes all understanding in their situation, in their time of need, in their time of, of, of mourning, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you word my mouth, Lord, and let me draw all sinners unto you, Father. Not for my glory, but for thy glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so let's pray a prayer for salvation, okay? Dear God, I know I've sinned, and my sin separates me from you. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me so my sin can be forgiven. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and is alive. God, please forgive me. I ask Jesus to come into my life and be my savior. And Lord, I will obey you and live for you the rest of my life. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you prayed that simple prayer and you confessed with your mouth, this confession was all wrapped up in there, and you believe in your heart the things that you prayed and the things that you confessed, if you believe that God sent his son Jesus to die for us and raised him from the dead, and you confess that you're a sinner, if you've done all that, you are saved. Thank God you are saved. So now, I want you to do a couple more things. It's not a lot of things. We talked about the ABCs. Admit, believe, confess. We talked about that. That's what we talked about. Sometimes it's, it's nice to just take our time. Because that's what we don't do a lot in this world. Everything is rush, rush, rush. Instant, instant this, instant that. Right now this, right now that. It's like, it seems like we never have time for anything. But we need to take time and make sure... Our eternal reservation is set. That's what we need to do. We need to make time for that. Okay? That's what it comes down to. And I got Sister Hemphill saying, Hallelujah. She's, she's, hallelujah is the highest praise. We have to give God the highest praise for his salvation. For his plan of salvation. And we thank him right now in advance. I'm thanking him for those who I haven't even met that will accept Christ. I thank him right now. Okay? I thank him for those who are sharing this. And the Others are drawn to Christ. I thank him right now for that. I thank him for the platform where we can, we can talk about the goodness of God, where we can talk about his love. We can talk about salvation. We can, we can encourage each other. I thank him for this platform. So I need you to do a couple more things since you've become saved. I need you to find a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. Pentecostal Temple, Church of God in Christ, which is located in Inkster, Michigan, Pastor is Kellen Brooks. This is the church that I belong to. I am a member of. Okay, we have Holy Trinity Temple of Deliverance in River Rouge. The pastor is Michael Miles. We have Everlasting Word Church of God in Christ in St. Clair Shores. The pastor is Wade K. Smith. We have New Christ Temple Church of God in Christ located in Detroit. The pastor is Superintendent Loris Upshaw, Jr. We have Dunamis Institutional Church of God in Christ, which is located in Ypsilanti. The pastor is Kenneth Walls III. We have Spirit of Praise Church of God in Christ, which is located in Ecorse, Michigan. And the pastor is Samuel Wyatt. Those are a couple examples of Bible-believing, Bible-teaching churches. I spread it out a little bit to try to hit a lot of the different areas. Um, if you're a pastor and you're watching and you want to be added, just inbox me. I'll add you. I'll be happy to add you. Um, so that's number one, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Number two, we have to read God's Word. The 
the Word of God, the Bible, basic ins basic instructions before leaving Earth. I love that acronym, basic instructions before leaving Earth, the Bible. We read God's Word because that way we learn more about God. We learn the way that we should go. It strengthens us. It is nourishment for our spiritual man. Okay, we we feed our natural man. We need to feed our spiritual man. Okay, and last but not least, and that they don't have to go in these orders, but last but not least on the three things that I wanted you to do is you have to pray. Let's look at prayer. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communication, communication, communication. I talked about a relationship. I didn't get into religion. I wanted to talk about a relationship with Christ, a relationship with Christ Jesus, a relationship with God the Father. I wanted to get into a relationship. Relationships are important, but we know that we don't have a very good relationship if we don't communicate. We have to communicate. We have to communicate sometimes when it's not comfortable. We have to communicate. We have to communicate sometimes when we don't feel like we can communicate. And it's, communication is two-way. It's not one-way. It's two-way. Communication is. Communication is hey, I'm speaking and I'm listening. I'm not just the only one talking. Okay, and communication, you want to make sure that you do that. That's, that's really critical to a relationship. God bless you, Evangelist Thomas. And that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to stir up your pure minds. I wanted to let you know that God loves you and I love you. Okay, you be encouraged and you have a prosperous day. You have a blessed day. I speak you being blessed going and coming in the name of Jesus. God loves you and so do I. You be encouraged.